Welcome to online worship at the Downtown Church. Next week, Sunday, September 12th, is our kickoff for the fall. At 9.15, we'll be starting a live stream study on the book of James, led by Jim Millsap. We hope that those of you who worship with us online will join us for this opportunity to deepen your faith and connect with the Downtown Church. Just go to our website to sign up so we can send you the link. September 12th is the Sunday we're planning to restart the downtown kids for children up to fifth grade during in-person worship. We're excited to have two new people to work in the nursery and we will need volunteers to help us with the kids. Let Carl and Pate hear from you. That evening at 5.30, our downtown youth will begin their first year together with Cody Williams as their fearless leader. If you know of someone in sixth to 12th grade, let Cody hear from you so that we can be sure they get an invitation. The downtown church is heading to Millsaps Farm for a fun night of music, pizza, and enjoying a beautiful fall evening on October 9th. To join us, please sign up on our website. At the end of the message today, I will invite you to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Take a moment now to get a drink and bread so you may participate in this gift of grace made holy by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's sing and worship together. Jesus, let your kingdom come here. Let your will be done here.
kingdom have become now. Let your glory reign, shine like the day. our prayer team a prayer request or an update please visit our website or email me I would also be honored to meet with you for prayer please hear these words from Deuteronomy 31 6 as our call to prayer today be strong and courageous do not be afraid or tremble at them for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you he will not fail you or forsake you Let's sing and prepare to pray. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross Follow, follow me Where he leads me I will follow Where he leads me I will follow Where he leads me I will follow, me, I will follow. I'll go with him with him all the way. I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go Good and merciful Lord, when Moses left the people of Israel, he reminded them to be strong and courageous because you would go with them. You would not fail or forsake them. Lord, we need reminding as did the people of old, for these are days of raging storms and burning fires. These are times of illness and war and heartache. So come Holy Spirit, speak into our hearts of the great love of God. Remind us of the faithfulness that has brought us so far and will bring us all the way through. Teach us through the daily miracles of life that your presence is constant, your grace unfailing, your mercy enough. We confess that often we feel so much like we're wandering in the desert, wondering when we will find safety, a place of rest, hope, and we wonder not just for ourselves, but for the vulnerable, those whose homes have been destroyed, those who are fleeing for their lives. Come Holy Spirit and pour out the assurance that though we wander, we are not lost. You are with us. We lift to you, Lord God, the many displaced people throughout our country and the world. We pray for those who are able to open their hearts and their resources to care for the many needs revealed each day. We pray for the disaster relief workers, the utility companies, the fire and rescue workers, the volunteers, the neighbors who are working together 
to restore their communities. May they find the moment of rest and the courage for the days ahead. We persist in prayer for the eradication of COVID-19. We pray for people who are able to choose the gift of being vaccinated for the sake of us all. Unite us, Lord God, in the prayer of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, good. And another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. <coughs> oh, I have a seat over there. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor. Well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? James 14. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you can have you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, Goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? <coughs> Hello, could I have some water? Oh, sure. Have you had anything to eat today? No. Okay, here. Laura, would you mind sharing your chair, please? Sit down here, please. Thank I'll you. be back. I have some soup, and I'll be back with water. Of course. <coughs> Thank you. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to have the kind of faith that will save others. Amen. Amen. Take a deep breath, and then listen to these words from James 2. I'm reading from the message version. My dear friends, don't let public opinion influence how you live out our glorious Christ-originated faith. If a man enters your church wearing an expensive suit and a street person wearing rags comes in right after him and he say to the man in the suit, sit here, sir, this is the best seat in the house, and either ignore the street person or say, better sit here in the back row, haven't you segregated God's children and proved that you are judges who can't be trusted? Hi, my name is Lori, and I'm judgmental. 
doggone it. I don't want to be. I want to become non-judgmental. I understand that far too often I'm walking around with a log in my eye and peering around it to point out the splinters in another's eye. I get that the past year I have had to try hard to remember that as Nadia Bowles Weber once quoted her friend Matthew, every time we draw a line between us and others, Jesus is always on the other side of it. I don't like that I struggle with being judgmental. I want to change it. I'm working on it. But my own judgmentalism rears its ugly head more often than I would like to admit. Monday morning, there was an article in the news leader about the need we have to help unsheltered people in our community. The numbers will keep growing as evictions will increase, funding decrease, COVID run rampant. The week before, when I arrived at work, I looked out my office window and there was a man sleeping up against the wall of the Reagan house next door. He was curled up with a, his head on a backpack. The day before, it had been 98 degrees and I had slept safely in my air-conditioned home. I waited until Keith arrived and then we went out and woke this person up, gave him some food and water and asked him to please move along. At the same time, another person had arrived at the door of the church. He was walking to the door and asked for another bag of food. His main mode of transportation is a wheelchair that he navigates with his feet. I was polite. We asked that no one park in our lot overnight, Wednesdays or Sundays, or when we have events only sign posted and the flag sign waving. Last week, when we had a funeral on Friday, I watched as someone drove around the signs and pulled into a parking place. Really? My name is Lori, and I'm judgmental. I fight against it, I pray against it, I think I have conquered it, and then suddenly I hear my own thoughts and I am appalled. I'm broken once again, for I have far to go. Last week, I watched the evacuation of Afghanistan, the loss of life of young Americans at the Kabul airport, and the many Taliban standing with weapons at the ready. No women or children are seen. I listened and learned of more cases of breakthrough COVID and the less than 50% vaccinated in our community. The vitriolic words being spewed about masking or not masking. And I learned once again, my name is Lori and I'm judgmental. Are you? James writes clearly and with great concern that what we say we believe aligns with how we're living our lives. Listen to these words again from James 2. I don't want you to miss this. My dear friends, don't let public opinion influence how you live out our glorious Christ-originated faith. If a man enters your church wearing an expensive suit and a street person wearing rags comes in right after him, and you say to the man in the suit, sit here, sir, this is the best seat in the house, and either ignore the street person or say, better sit here in the back row. Haven't you segregated God's children and proved that you are judges who can't be trusted? I tried something different today. I dress up when I video. I even fix my makeup and check my hair one more time before the camera starts rolling. I dress up on Sunday mornings. I always have. I want to make sure I look good, that I fit in. I grew up in an age where you had church clothes, where you put on your Sunday best and went to church in style. Only a woman could wear a hat, but certainly not a baseball cap. Sandals? No way. Shorts? Not even a consideration. When I first went into ministry at a large church with three services, I wore a robe for the early traditional service, but underneath, I was still dressed up because the robe would come off for the next two services and I would again need 
my Sunday best on. So please, know I'm uncomfortable in my t-shirt, shorts, and sandals, especially in this sanctuary. But the Holy Spirit keeps working on me. I've been asking myself some pretty harsh questions. Do I react differently to people based on how they look? How much more judgmental have I become the past two years? When will I change? Hi, my name is Lori, and I'm judgmental of others and of myself. And I began to wonder and ponder, what if I just didn't dress up to give a message? I know it would make me uncomfortable, but would it make you uncomfortable or would you even notice? Have I raised expectations that it matters what you wear at the downtown church and that if you don't fit in we'll treat you differently or are we really more interested in fulfilling our vision being a place where Christ and the community intersect and it doesn't matter one bit how you're dressed how you look is this place truly a Big S Sanctuary, a place of refuge and safety? Or is it only a sanctuary, like a wildlife preserve, where things cannot get in or out without climbing over a fence? It's hard sometimes to sit with words such as those written by James, the brother of Jesus. He's writing to first-generation Christ followers, those who, if they did not know Jesus, knew someone who did. He reminds them of the countercultural, upside-down way they're going to have to live if they are going to engage with bringing God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And he's writing to us, too. At the downtown church, we are, in so many ways, a first-generation church, a place that is beginning again. We don't know who we are after stopping in-person gatherings for almost a year, going online for worship, living within a pandemic that still requires that some of our church family remain at home for their own health and safety. We had a whopping 10 months once we chartered in June of 2019 as a new church before March 2020 changed us. And, like a first-generation church, we have a mission and a vision. We are to tell the story of Jesus Christ in such a way that others may come to believe in the love of God and the power of redemption. We're seeking to live as people who love God and love our neighbor. We are determined to move our community forward in reconciliation and restoration. So I guess I take that back. Maybe we do know who we are, but we still need a James to help us understand that we don't get to pick and choose who we love, how we love. Mercy over judgment. James is not messing around. He is direct, clear. Verse 8. You do well when you complete the royal rule of the scriptures. Love others as you love yourself. But if you play up to those so-called important people, you go against the rule and stand convicted by it. You can't pick and choose in these things, specializing in keeping one or two things in God's law and ignoring the others. The same God who said don't commit adultery also said don't murder. If you don't commit adultery but go ahead and murder, do you think your non-adultery will cancel out your murder? Nope, you're a murderer, period. Talk and act like a person expecting to be judged by the rule that sets us free. For if you refuse to act kindly, you can hardly expect to be treated kindly. Kind mercy wins over harsh judgment every time. That is the lesson of Jesus written down by his brother James that I want us to seep into our minds and hearts today. Mercy over judgment. In the world James was writing, the Roman government judged, the religious leaders judged, the crowds judged, 
The disciples even judged. Are we so different? We judge based on race, gender identification, sexual preferences. We judge based on political affiliations, denominational leanings, scriptural interpretation. We judge if someone makes too much or is dependent on government assistance. We will give up our seat in the pew for some, but to others, with a glance, with a flinch, with a word, you can't sit here. We do it out of fear, out of ignorance, out of a need to be right. And honestly, sometimes I know I am right. Oh, dang. There I go again. Jesus taught over and over again, mercy over judgment. He looked at the woman caught in adultery, saw her need, and then extended mercy. The Roman centurion whose son was dying, the representative of the government that would nail him to a cross. Jesus saw the father's faith and he extended mercy. The woman at the well who had many men in her life as husbands and now was living with another. She did not receive judgment, but instead received mercy. The man possessed by demons was given mercy. Zacchaeus, who had defrauded others for years, mercy. Peter, who denied knowing Jesus, mercy. And on the cross, mercy triumphs over judgment. The most important event in history was an act of mercy. Jesus standing in our place, forgiving us, Jesus loving us, Jesus extending mercy instead of judgment to all. It's astounding. When you and I come to the cross with all our sins and mistakes and our words of judgment, we do not receive judgment in return. We are given mercy. We are given an opportunity to do better, be better, speak more kindly, to live more justly, and to love more freely. Does it matter what I wear as a follower of Jesus Christ? Does it matter if I confess to you that I struggle with judgmentalism? Can we, as a body of Christ, intentionally choose mercy? Can we be a sanctuary, a place of safety, where we're working together to love God and love neighbor, to extend mercy? Hi, my name is Lori, and... I am a sinner, redeemed by the grace of God and the mercy of Jesus Christ, who is working on my judgmentalism. Join me. Let's pray. Almighty and merciful God, help the downtown church to truly live into our vision to be a place where Christ and the community intersect. Quicken our spirits to know before we speak, before we harm, before we judge, to choose another way the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, the way of mercy. We pray in his name. Amen. Now come with me to the table where Jesus is extending mercy to all who've gathered there, the one who would betray him, the one who would deny him, the many who will run away. To them, to us, he offers the gift of his body and blood. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now your table is Christ's table. Dip your bread in the cup and receive the sacrament made holy by the merciful Jesus Christ. Amen. There is good news, there is good truth that you can never change, no matter what you do. You are loved more than you know, more than you could hope for 
after everything you've done as sure as the sun will rise and chase away the night his mercy will not end his mercy will not end There is good news, there's a promise that no matter where you go, you will never be alone in the dark, in the doubting, when you can't feel anything, oh, his love remains the same. As sure as the sun will rise and chase away the night, his mercy will not end. Even through the night, oh, soon. Stars will shine, oh, hope of glory's light that will wake us once again. As sure as the sun will rise and change. His mercy will not end.